One thing that uh, I've always been a proponent of, um, and I have to say, I was developed maybe in my my teens, but a long time ago, is term limits. What what are your feelings on term limits, and and why? Well, I I've never really thought the idea of term limits, at least uh, locally and maybe at the state level, were necessary. We're on the ballot here every two years. Um, I've always thought that if a person was doing uh, their job well, that uh, that in, in itself uh, shouldn't be penalized by uh, having to term out. Uh, and conversely, if people don't like the job you're doing, and if, quite honestly, if you're doing a lousy job, I think the people will make sure that your term is limited. So I've always felt that it was somewhat, somewhat different at the local and state level uh, to impose term limits than the argument about imposing them at the federal level. Um, nobody's getting wealthy being a, a state representative or a senator. The pay's not that great. Um, we've recently heard stories about the wealth of members of Congress and certainly that, uh, that in itself makes one wonder whether term limits would actually be beneficial to the country as a whole. On a national level. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, we'll, we'll be getting to taxes, and I, I guess taxes is, uh, and the, the whole spending issue are, are certainly intertwined. Um, could you tell the folks that, or viewers uh, your feelings on the on the state spending in these difficult times? And for example, just yesterday, which uh, was January 25th, the Fed comes out and says they plan to hold interest rates at zero through 20. 2014. I mean, we're just at the beginning of 2012, and they're talking about basically three. That to me is is a red light going off. T talk to to uh, you know our, our viewers about the state spending and and what your thoughts are. And uh, I I think first and foremost, I view myself as a fiscal conservative, and I think that uh, that's appropriate given the people that I represent. Uh, I think generally. Uh, people feel that they're already taxed enough, that they're not getting their dollars worth uh, out of Hartford. Um, I generally have supported that. I, I can honest, I can sit here today and, and tell you that I, I can't say that I never voted for a tax increase. I think it was in 2007. Uh, there were uh, the governor's budget proposal as well as the majority party's budget proposal uh, had various tax increases in it. Uh, the budget that I did support in the end uh, had uh, an increase in cigarette tax, so uh, I did support that. Uh, but generally, I'm I'm not a big believer that we should uh, tax first and then cut after that if we need to. I always think there's room for greater efficiencies uh, and areas where we can look at either redundancy or waste in government. And I think we should control spending ahead of. Uh, tax. Uh, I, I have heard the ma former majority leader, uh, one of our former majority leaders got up on the floor of the House and said, we don't have a spending problem, we have a revenue problem. Uh, I could not have disagreed uh, more vehemently with her on that particular issue and uh, that's how I've approached the 11 years I've spent uh, in the legislature and I don't imagine that will change. Well, following up on, on that, can you have a meaningful dialogue with, with uh, the Dems in, in Hartford about taxes being out of control? Do they, and I'll, I'll frankly, I'll use myself, I think, as an example. Do they understand that, uh, or, you know, I hope they care, but sometimes I wonder if they care uh, about people such as myself that have moved from New York to get away from outlandish property taxes? And I, I think that's something that I just don't understand or, or as I say, you know, I, I, could, I don't have deep roots here and I could move again, um, you know, I don't plan to, uh, and it's certainly not, you know, a threat that, um, you know, I'm going to move, but do they understand that there are a lot more tax-friendly states out there and it's, I, in a way, each state has to compete with the others? Well, s certainly actions speak louder than words and it would appear that they don't understand that. Um, Privately, uh, you can find various legislators who admit that they are a little uncom 
uncomfortable imposing uh, tax increases and uh, I think it's worth noting that under the current administration under Gover Governor Malloy's proposal uh, we had the highest tax increase ever in one year uh, 1.8 billion dollars and um, it was quite disappointing to see uh, people that represent areas that I think are comparable to the area that I represent where I'm quite sure that the constituents that I represent feel a 1.8 billion dollar tax increase it was just way too much. It, it was disappointing to see uh, other legislators support uh, the governor's proposal on that. So uh, you can have dialogue with them uh, privately. They might speak a little differently than uh, their voting record shows. Uh, and to be honest, I, I'd be uncomfortable voting for tax increases uh, of that magnitude. So it, we'll just keep putting up the, the fight as we do every year. Yeah, good, okay. And again, not to keep harping on the issue, but I, I hear what I think is lip service about wanting to keep our youth here in, in Connecticut, in the state. And yet people can't afford, particularly younger people, can't afford to live here. I, I question, and maybe it's a rhetorical question, um, can't those in Hartford, you know, or even on a local level to some degree, can't they connect the dots? Uh, this is near and dear to my heart in that I have uh, two sons, both in their mid-twenties. Um, one of them a recent graduate from Eastern Connecticut State University, um, and which Govern Governor Malloy gave the keynote address that day. And uh, I think that day he quoted that 90% of the graduates stay in Connecticut. And, and uh, I found that hard to believe that day, and I still find that uh, hard to believe. Uh, my son graduated with his bachelor's in business and uh, that was last May, still haven't found a job. Uh, my other son works in retail, he's lucky uh, to have a full-time job with benefits, uh, but he's not earning nearly enough to be able to uh, handle any, uh, if there's out-of-pocket expenses for some health care issue or uh, something happens with his car or uh, some something that he needs for the house it's very difficult so uh, some of us connect those dots while others seem to uh, bury their heads in the sand on the issue yeah. are there any particular causes that that you champion uh, agriculture as I said earlier always been near and dear to my heart um, uh, I'm proud of the money we've invested in farmland preservation since I've been in the legislature. Uh, we're a long ways from protecting our the amount of acreage we'd like to uh, for farms uh, the, through the purchase of development rights program. Uh, but we've gotten a good start on it. Open space is another thing. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. So uh, those are two things that I uh, continue to push for. Uh, probably the third, at least as a member of the Environment Committee, is clean water funding. Um, it's a huge burden on our towns with sewage treatment plants. Uh, if nitrogen levels are high, they have to buy credits for nitrogen. So uh, there are so many needs out there to, for sewage treatment plants to be improved and uh, brought up to date that I, I'm, I'm pretty proud that we continually try to fund that at, at least a respectable level. Yeah, okay. Well, if there was one or two things that you'd like to leave with, with the audience, um, what, what might it or, the, or they be? I think it's important for people to know that we are their local representatives in Hartford, uh, the ones we see in the grocery store, and, and uh, that it starts with the people that we represent. And, and we always try to solicit their opinions on various issues and I would encourage all of all of the viewers to continue to either email us or keep the phone calls coming to let us know what's on your mind because it is a representative representative form of government okay and and following on that can you tell tell the viewers um, how they might contact you email or phone can you can you provide that sure uh, me personally uh, on an election on a, uh, a state matter uh, one eight hundred eight four two one four two three 
and ask for my office and you'll be connected with my aide or Clark Chapin at CGA as in Connecticut General Assembly dot CT dot gov. Okay, great. Okay, well, we're, go we're going to wrap up our show now. Again, I'd like to thank our guest, Clark Chapin of the 67th District, uh, state representative and candidate for Senate in District 30 for appearing on the show. I also want to remind our viewers our air dates on Charter Channel 21 are Mondays at 4.30 and th Thursdays at 7 p.m. We also post segments of our shows on YouTube and you can find them on, at www.youtube.com slash Brookfield Public Advo. And you can contact us at Brookfield Public Advocate at yahoo.com. We'd love to hear from you, whether it be comments on shows, uh, people that are guests that you'd like to see, topics that you'd like to see discussed. Uh, we have some, some lined up. Uh, we have a candidate for the uh, U.S. Senate that uh, we'll be uh, having as a guest uh, later on in the spring. We have a, uh, rep, uh, someone running for the U.S. Congress, and we've got a few good shows lined up for you. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, and good night. Okay. I think that went well. Well, it goes by very quick.